Who might be these women of revolutionary acclaim? The many women who bear the Molly Pitcher name. The women of acclaim, or the ones who really bear the Molly Pitcher name, could have been one of the many camp wives and water bringers that assisted in the great battles of the revolution. The Molly Pitcher story may stem from the actions of a camp follower, who is generally now believed to have been Mary McCauley, but there was also another woman with a similar story and a similar stature, and that is of Margaret Cochran Corbin. These two incredible women actually have a very similar story, which is often causing confusion as to who and what they did. This has caused their story to often be commingled and has led to the retelling of the Molly Pitcher story that most Americans know today. That is of a camp follower heroically running through an active battlefield, giving water and medical attention to downed patriots, and eventually she threw down her pitchers and took a man's place on the cannon. She seized a fallen ramrod and took about shoving cannonballs down the cannon's mouths and lighting the fuse when need be. Her long skirt tied out of the way and her long hair flowing like a flag of freedom. Thus, the name Molly Pitcher comes down to us as a symbol of courage and resourcefulness under fire. To help separate the stories and give the women credit for her heroics, this is the history of Margaret Cochran Corbin or also known as Captain Molly. Margaret Molly Corbin was born November 12, 1751 in Franklin County, Pennsylvania. She grew up on the frontier, but her young life was quick to no tragedy. When Molly was only five years old, a group of natives raided her family's homestead. Her father was killed and her mother was taken captive, never to be seen again by the young girl. Molly and her surviving brother were adopted and raised by her uncle. Not much else is known about Molly's childhood, but in 1772, at the age of 21, Molly married John Corbin, a Virginia farmer. In 1775, John joined the Continental Army and trained as an artillery gunner. Molly followed her husband, not as a soldier, but as a camp wife, or they were also known as a camp follower. The life of a camp follower or wife was not one of ease. The women gathered and preserved food and supplies, and they repaired, when possible, uniforms, blankets, and other items that would have otherwise just been turned useless rags. They cooked for the camp, they tended to their husbands, or they looked for one if they were a simple follower, and they kept camp in more order than if men had been left to their own devices. On the battlefield, they acted as nurses, and they brought water to thirsty men, and others, like Molly, brought water to help cool the cannon, and also brought powder and ball as needed. In fact, through more modern historical interpretations, this may have been the primary job of some of the camp followers, water bringers that were assigned solely to the cannon crews. On November 16, 1776, while Molly and John were stationed at Fort Washington in Upper Manhattan, 4,000 British troops and Hessian mercenaries attacked the outnumbered Maryland and Virginia riflemen, who were defending the position. Corbin's artillery was ordered to hold off the attackers with what few cannons they had. During the four-hour battle, every hand was needed to man the cannon and muskets. John was assisting a gunner until the gunner was killed. At this point, John took charge of the cannon and Molly, who had dressed as a man in order to stay with her husband, assisted him. Some time later, John was killed instantly when a Heston musket ball found its mark. He had no time to breathe. Margaret continued loading and firing the cannon by herself. Many of the American soldiers commented on Captain Molly's steady aim and sure shot. Because of her aim and accuracy, her position drew attention from the ten field cannons of the Hessians, and soon they trained her guns on her. She continued to fire, however, until she was wounded by grape shot, which tore her shoulder, almost severing off her left arm, mangled her chest, and lacerated her jaw. Molly was unable to use her left arm for the rest of her life due to these injuries. Other soldiers moved her to the rear where she received medical care. The British eventually won this battle with Corbin numbered among the prisoners of war who were paroled and released back to the care of the revolutionary hospitals. Because of her significant injuries, on July 6, 1779, the Continental Congress granted her a pension, half the pay and allowances of a soldier in service, due to her distinguished bravery, making her the first woman to receive a pension from the government as a disabled soldier. Furthermore, she was enrolled into the Corps of Invalids, 
and was remain and retained on the muster list until the end of the war. Captain Molly died in 1800 near West Point and faded into obscurity aside from local historians who struggled to keep her memory alive through oral storytelling and traditions or she was just lumped into the Molly Pitcher story. In 1962, the New York Daughters of the American Revolution verified Margaret's records that recognized her heroism and they petitioned to have her remains removed from a crude stone marker which had, and then had her reinterned with her full military honors at West Point. She was only one of two American soldiers from the Revolutionary War buried at West Point. Captain Molly Corbin may not be Molly Pitcher, but she was a heroic and valiant woman who joined in and fought for the cause of liberty even after watching her husband fall in battle. To honor her in Fort Tyrone Park in New York City, a bronze plaque reads, On the hilltop stood Fort Tyrone, the northernmost outer work of Fort Washington, and its gallant defense against the Hessian troops by the Maryland and Virginia Regiment, 16 November 1776, was shared by Margaret Corbin, the first woman to take a soldier's place in the war for liberty.